What's up folks? This is a bit of a weird video because it's both super important and also kind of random because it's a stream re-upload of a multiplayer test Keen ran earlier today that turned into this big Q&A session with Marek. And we got some crazy answers to some crazy questions. I mean, we know the roadmap for Space Engineers pretty much. Now given they had internet issues and that stream was quite choppy on their end, I figured I'd re-upload things, edit it down a bit, so you guys both see my point of view, what was going on action-wise for me, but also so you can hear some of this stuff, because it's super important, guys. I'm not going to tell you my opinions yet, I want to do a separate video on that, but please, once you've watched it, comment down below. I want to hear what the community thinks of some of these answers, because there's definitely some big ones in there, and I don't know if people will be pleased with all of them. We'll have to see. So maybe, Joel, let's go to Q&A for a second. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah. D if the guys, in, if the guys uh, in Discord here have any questions about uh, specific, ideally multiplayer, anything about it, you can ask Marek and that would be great. Yeah, I got a question for you. So you mentioned having um, multiple servers around the world. What's the plan there? Are we going to have official keen servers running for survival or like, what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. So we will explain this a little bit in more uh, detail in the blog post when we will release the multiplayer update. But for now I can say that right now we are running uh, about 20, uh, 20 space engineering servers, which is about 5 or 7 like real machines. And they are all around the world. And uh, we will most likely add few like more to this pool, uh, at least for the like trial period for one month or something like this. So we'll test it uh, if people uh, want to play on the official Keen servers uh, that we can manage and so on. So again, to to keep this uh, story shorter, uh, the, the reason why we uh, are thinking about having our own official servers is that we can control the quality and uh, we can have them around the world and they can be, and this is the main, main, main reason, uh, they can be the first thing that the new players will experience because we don't want new players to end up on servers, you know, where there are griefers or people doing some stuff. We actually want new players to end up on servers that are well prepared for new servers. So we are preparing many more servers for the first month of this new multiplayer and then we'll see. Because there is one still unsolved thing and it is uh, like who will pay for these servers because uh, even like our revenue is not made for continuous um, like expenses uh, on the servers and we never actually like consider this option so for one month we'll pay for this but then for later we'll need to decide uh, like how to get money for running of these servers. I guess that was my follow-up question was be are you going to be like partnering with anybody or working through anything to have um uh, support for communities that want to have their own running servers. Like, is there anywhere that we can uh, work through that? Any solutions for that for communities for hosting our own like big servers? Yeah, I think with people, proper hardware behind them. Yeah, people can will be still able to run their own dedicated servers just like now. And if they prove that their servers are well managed and good, they will get this little star. You know, this this rank that they are recommended. And actually, you can even see it now in the. Uh, join game screen, you know, in the server list, there is, I think it's star, and basically when you put a mouse on it, you will see that it's a recommended server. So right now our servers are recommended, but in the future we plan to give this star also to people who can manage their servers properly. properly. And then of, of course, uh, also what we are considering is uh, us running the servers and, you know, like doing this infrastructure part of the thing. And then volunteers or people from the community uh, like game mastering, game doing the game admin job uh, on the servers. That's another uh, possibility. Still kind of like unofficial, or like I don't want to promise it, but that's one thing. So again, to, to keep this short, uh, after we release the uh, new multiplayer, we will have many servers, probably tens of them around the world. Uh, they will be official, hosted by Keen, uh, they will have their own dedicated game admins who will be making sure that the servers run well and if someone is doing some mess, you know, they will clean it and so on. And, and uh, after this month, we will have to figure out uh, uh, how to pay for the servers. And also, uh, the servers, they will have the star that they are recommended and uh, we'll be giving the stars also to other game admins who will be hosting their servers on their hardware 
so that people can find them as, as a recommended servers. To, to be an approved kind of server, will there be, will it, being a modded server, using mods to keep you from being, being able to gain that, uh, I guess, like more official status? I, I wouldn't say that modded servers cannot be, uh, cannot have this official status. I would say it, it all depends on the, basically on the admin, you know, if he understands okay. the mods, and can set them up in a way that they provide good experience for newcomers, then I personally don't have any problem giving the star. Okay, this is just one, obviously, a lot of that's been focused on dedicated servers. What are the plans for local hosted servers? You know, just being able to drop in with some friends and, and play a small game without needing to worry about maybe other people being on the server with me that might mess with my stuff, or vice versa, having to get a dedicated server to play. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I'm not 100% sure about this question because this is something that was open question and obviously like right now you can uh, have this lobby, you know, and uh, you can play on your client and your friends can join. There are some uh, disadvantages in this model, you know, uh, when you compare it with dedicated servers. So uh, this is one thing that I still need to evaluate, so I, I cannot say more. Is that enough? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I guess you have to see how it goes more yeah. than anything else. Because there still needs to be some evaluation on this particular thing. Like the main uh, goal for this multiplayer thing was uh, dedicated servers. I mean, multiplayer in general, but we dedicated servers. And the lobby was kind of like less important thing, but uh, it was also important and, and I still need to evaluate. Sorry, Marek, I just... Uh I was just flicking through the grids and I just see this flying around. Mm -hmm. But the sim speed is holding up. I've got 1.0 sim speed, both local and client uh, server, and 60 FPS. <laughs> it it looks like I'm driving around with my moon buggy right now with a couple other vehicles here. It, it looks like we don't have the uh, this ESP issues anymore, right? Uh, no, I don't think. Well, it was dropping out a second. So what we, it was dropping out a little bit ago. So it's it's still suffering a little bit. So I'm just going to activate this drilling rig here in the center. This is the this is a a planet drill designed to go through a planet. So let's let this one. Oh, Shaq, let me get on. Oh, okay. Hang on, I'll stop for you. I'm heading over to the planet drill. So uh, either side has quick. a door. You can pop in. Oh, so it's cool. All right, Ian. Okay, go, go, go. We're, we're rolling. Nice. Cool. It's my new exploration. It's actually buggy. quite surprising like how, how well the sim speed holds. Yeah, it's holding up really. I mean, oh my. to be fair, like, this, this moon base here is one thing, but the fact out the fact is, Marek, I, there's people out there in freaking. Uh, is, it, is it still there? I, oh, it seems to have. Because I, I did put no limits on this, but I. Um, Oh, it seems to have gone. Maybe someone deleted it. Is this thing to go all the way to the planet? That's the idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve, merge so you just drop in the hole and just keep going. Nice. Um, yeah, still connection problem, so the ESP is... Yeah. Sorry, Shaq, we're still losing you. It's such a shame because it is go like, uh, it's... Just it's fine, yeah, but the yeah, we lost the stream. I can see it, it goes red. It was great fun as well. Marek had just got on top of the truck I was driving and then yeah. gone for a ride as we jumped to the sky. I don't yeah, know, yeah, Jack, and everything. It was totally good. Like and doing all this. of a sudden, it was like, oh, no, nope, internet's gone. Yeah, I saw ways to jump over a hill, though. It's hilarious. I think this requires more pistons, just one more piston. Someone is saying that there is clunk. So, where is the clunk? Stop. Or not? Mm. Oh. Oh. No. No. So um. <laughs> what what's the hell is about it? Flying fortress in the air. In the air. Oh man, man it's a air. massive ship. Alien invasions. Holy moly. So many expanses going on. And I jump up to it in the car. <laughs> that trail is so loud. <laughs> <laughs> that is very much a space engineer question. Can I do something ridiculous? He's going for it. 
Uh, almost. Did you make it? Uh, no. The <laughs> there. drill is going. It's continuing. The <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so the, the oh, planet drill is still though. working. Good. <laughs> Who's this here? Oh, I'm Alex with me. Reporting live from the drill. I like that it was. We were gonna, you know, try out. I guess this this planet mining drill, and now it's like giant ship in orbit. People are trying to land on the ship oh, with their ground vehicles the while this. No, thing yeah, is I'm, I'm inside. Yeah. Where's the entrance? Uh, it's K. You gotta go over I down down here. Any of the four stairs, there's there's a, there's a door there. Come there, drill. Yeah. I lost it again. Yeah. Uh, the connection trying. But the good thing is that <laughs> even with these ESP issues, you know, it's still okay. Yeah, it's. I mean, the ser the server is the server is running fine. It's just this ISP issue. It's nothing to do with the game, which is which is it's it's, be it's better that way around, right? It's better to know that the server is running fine. Um, it's just we're having this issue right now. We, have we still got yeah, we still got the guys in Discord, okay, right? But dropping out and now and again, I guess. Nah, uh, it's really. Oh, I've driven inside the planet. Um... What's the ping like? What, what, what kind of ping have we got? Uh, it's kind of standard, I guess. Yeah, I think we've uh, lost lost the connection again. It's weird that Discord's standing staying. I guess Discord requires the least bandwidth. It's only a little. It's only you know killer bit. Yeah, it's not well, It's it's not that big compared to sending the video feed or downloading the game data. Yeah, like I'm I'm in my vehicle and I can kind of move it, but I can't get out of it at the moment because I think it's I'm I'm sort of connected to the server right now. So yeah. It keeps dropping. And to be fair, there might also be some prioritization. I don't know. Maybe Discord tries to. Uh... Oh, I'm not gonna make it. Is that it's you doing so a jump? Close. <laughs> it's so close. Um, Get back here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, almost, almost. Uh, good landing, though. Good landing. There's a car landing. chase going you on. You gotta have wheels on that wasted. Ah, well, <laughs> that's how you know it's one of mine. <laughs> it's gotta have 16 wheels, no less. Does it have wheels in the middle as well as on the sides? Oh, yeah, okay, like then. 27 wheels. I got you. Yeah, look. <laughs> Until I steal one. There's quite a lot going on, Mark, actually, because, I mean, like, um, the... I think controls just still checking on on a on, on a standard server. A lot of this stuff might not be allowed because of the uh, either the PCU limits or uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, restrictions. And this this server has no restrictions, um, just because it actually it's it's an older world. Actually, that's one of the reasons. I, I think it might be a good plan for either you or Marek to tell everyone a bit more about the PCU limits and how they work. Because I know for one, I don't quite understand how they work at a minute, so maybe we could do like a little explanation if possible. Yeah, that's a good question, and there are actually not that many people who know how the PCU works. So, um, oh, come on. Basically, the principle is that, uh, like, why we introduce them is that um, each block, yes. we can assume, has per uh, certain performance cost, and it's different for wheel, different for uh, gravity generator, and for other things. And it's kind of like estimated because in different situations they are costly different. And uh, the PCU limits, uh, so for example, uh, wheel will have uh, one wheel will be equal to let's say five PCUs, one armor block, let's say one PCU, and so on. And uh, then you have some limits uh, like per faction and per player. And uh, basically, you can build up to that limit. And then uh, the trash removal kicks in and starts removing uh, blocks that are somehow marked or kind of like detected as uh, unused. So it shouldn't uh, delete the stuff that you are working on right now. It should delete something that is that you didn't approach for a long time or uh, something that is too far uh, far away from you or something that resembles a debris and so on. And uh, so there are these two things basically: uh, PCUs and uh, Trash removal. And when it comes to the PCUs, I noticed that the, uh, for example, the reloadable rocket launcher has a PCU of like 450, whereas an armor block has a PCU of one. 
What's the thinking behind that, that quite large difference between the two? It actually makes sense because the, the launcher uh, can shoot um, missiles and the missile, uh, just like thinking of from top of my head, the missile where it can get costly is that uh, it's doing gray casts to the geometry. And so uh, every missile, you know, these are just running around or like flying around, is doing many of these ray casts, uh, trying to detect uh, if there is some collision, if it shouldn't explode and so on. And these are actually quite expensive, you know. I mean, they're not super expensive because we try to optimize them, but, but they're still uh, expensive if you have like hundreds of them or thousands of them. And, you know, like when we were doing these big, uh, large ship battles, there were many uh, missiles flying around. I don't know. Of course, exactly how many, but it looked to me like, let's say, 20, 50, like at all times or at any time, there was at least 20, 50 missiles. So that's one thing, uh, these raycasts, you know, when the missile is flying and then when it hits something, explodes, there is damage, you know, so we need to calculate these, these damaged and deformed armors plus uh, the other damage on the, on the ship or whatever it hits. So this is the thinking behind it. Actually, missiles, not just the, uh, uh, this rocket launcher. Yeah, actually, rocket launcher can also have like itself its own uh, cost, and that's actually like how it's spinning and, and looking around where to shoot. Uh, it also needs to be the casts and to detect, you know, like if there is not some enemy uh, where it can shoot and so on. So that's also kind of costly. And uh, uh, again, even if you optimize it, if you have a ship with many of them, let's say like 100 or just many of them, it will cost. Uh, so if you compare this, like uh, your comparison with armor and uh, launcher is very good because armor is just doing nothing, you know, it's just there, it's just being rendered. If something happens to this armor, it's being deformed and so on. But the launcher, uh, it's constantly doing something like seeking for the enemies and when there is an enemy, shoots the missile and then the missile is also doing the raycasts. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. it's a bit, I had a feeling it was along those lines, but that's a far better explanation than I would have made up, so yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if no one else has anything else, I do have another one. Go for it, Ram. Yeah, sure. go for it. Uh, okay, th this one's just regarding the sort of experimental mode. We've seen it crop up in the, the test stuff as, as sort of a, there's a new option there and people are running internet tonight to get into the creative world. You have to go and turn experimental on. Is this something you're planning on sort of actually carrying through to the full release or is this something just implemented for this testing phase? Uh, and if it's full release, sort of how much stuff is going to be in that experimental section? Uh, this is something that will like keep on even in the final release. And uh, the reasoning behind this is uh, like during the development of Space Engineers, we have implemented many features. Uh, as some kind of experiments, or I mean, the whole space engine is still some kind of an experiment until it's released. And uh, uh, we, like, due to, let's say, time reasons, we cannot finish all of these features, uh, or, and this is most uh, more common, we kind of don't want, because we don't think they, they belong to, to the, like, vanilla space engineers. And another reasoning is that, uh, for example, mods, or creative mode, or let's let's focus on mods. In mods, uh, people can put any mods in their worlds, and we don't have any control uh, about these mods. You know, so there can be like very inefficient mods or buggy mods, and so on. And uh, so, with uh, having this experimental mode, uh, what we wanted to do is this: that a new player who doesn't know nothing about space engineers, by default, his game runs in non-experimental. In we call it like safe, but we don't want to. We don't want to say that you know the other stuff is unsafe. We just want to say that uh, it's not running in in experimental. And this player uh, shouldn't he should experience space engineers in the way we want it and in a way that we can guarantee good experience. You know, like good sim speed, uh, things working working well and fast and so on. Uh, for more experienced players, which actually is everyone who already is playing space engineers. Because I think the main thing is is like nearly everyone uses. A some mods, not yeah. everyone does, but a lot of people yeah. do, I would say. I, the majority of people use some mods. So people yeah. who already have installed and play Space Engineers, they will have experimental mode installed, uh, not installed, enabled by default. And then they can do these experimental things. And currently, uh, what is in experimental, 
I'm not 100% sure about all these things because we are changing them like here and there. So uh, I may say something wrong and I hope then I will fix it in the in the blog post. There will be in like uh, the true will be in the in the blog post. But right now I think creative in multiplayer you need to be in experimental and the reasoning behind this is that uh, in in experimental mode in multiplayer people can start uh, copy pasting huge ships exploding like many warheads. They can completely disable PCUs. This you know performance counter limits uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, so we don't have control uh, around what people can do there. And we were actually thinking about many ways how we can limit people in what they can <laughs> copy paste to the game. But this was also against our another philosophy that we had since the beginning that we don't want to limit people in what they can do in space engineers. That we always were assuming that, okay, we'll let them do whatever they want, like copy paste whatever they want, big uh, uh, build uh, ships as big as they want, or at least it's. Uh, how much is technically possible and they will understand that you know like it's running slow because the ship is super huge and so so uh, and we want to keep this this philosophy but again we also want to make good experience for new players who doesn't understand these complex things because they are still new to the game so that's uh, that's what else is uh, currently in the experimental mode so if you want to run mods you know that's in experimental mode uh, I think spiders and uh, and uh, and docs. I think it's air tightness at the moment. I think it's air tightness yes, yes, scripts, yes, yes. mods, creative mode, block limits, and uh, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I mentioned air tightness, didn't I? Oh, and yep. weirdly, the FOV slider. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? They actually am surprised. Yeah, I, that one felt a bit out of place. That's a little bit strange. <laughs> I will look on this. So chat's asking, um, tech stack wanted to know what are the server specs that you guys are running so they can kind of compare their servers they've already got set up. Okay. Uh, I need to remember. I was actually copy pasting this to, to someone in a, in Reddit and I think it's like four gigahertz and I'm, I think it's around, uh, four or eight cores and or let me let me check. You can ask something, or like do do something else, okay. and, and I will. Uh, well, while uh, you're looking at that one, uh, Herod wants to know how how the process for getting a verified server work, or how do you see it working once that uh, that's underway. Uh, usually, I think uh, in the beginning it will be by recommendation, which means that. Uh, we'll see that uh, someone is managing the server well, people joining that server are happy, and they will give the server this ranking. So uh, uh, okay. in the future, maybe we'll make more kind of like, you know, standard procedure kind of thing where people will ask, uh, we'll have some checklist and so on. But in the beginning, I think it will be uh, by recommendation or by just us seeing what the people in the community are doing and so on. So I just see uh, X-Wing posted something uh, regarding the question on the servers. So it's not exactly what, uh, okay, so it's basically 3.5 gigahertz or four gigahertz. Uh, as far as I know, uh, we usually have like 32 giga RAM per server and there are multiple dedicated servers running on one physical server i think three or something like that and uh, so i wouldn't say it's any special hardware uh, what was very important for us was that we needed a lot of gigahertz so we rather uh, choose servers that have a lot of gigahertz and less cores uh, when compared with servers you know like sometimes in business applications you have servers that don't have that many gigahertz but have many cores. And the reasoning for this is that we need our servers because there can happen ev events like, uh, you know, uh, collisions, deformations, and you need the results being computed fast, like immediately. Uh, you don't care about you know, like paralyzing this thing because some of these things cannot be paralyzed that well. So we don't care about paralyzation. We just want that calculation being, you know, like calculated as fast as possible. So gigahertz are where we are looking for. And since now we are preparing some more uh, dedicated servers, you know, these official servers, 
uh, we'll also look a little bit more into you know like what is available currently on the market so maybe we can have some like 16 core servers running for gigahertz and it can be actually cheaper for us in this load balancing of the of the performance of uh, us being able to have more dedicated server per one physical server but i think that's just technicality okay cool uh i got another one though so you guys want to ask a question mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so uh, Jesse wants to know, and I, I really like that this is now a feature. Um, the safe zones will they will they be in the official uh, the FM, I guess, official servers, or will we be able to be able to place them in their um, in their own worlds? The like, no damage safe zones we've seen already in yeah, some of the testing. Yeah, definitely. Like the game master or the game admin, he has the right to to put a safe zone like whenever he wants. Like players who join the server and don't have these rights, of course they cannot because they would break the game. But the game admin, he has the right and he can do it. So even on the not official keen servers, people will be able to manage their safe zones. And the funny thing is uh, regarding the safe zones is that we had it in our design five years ago. And then as we're implementing one feature after another from our roadmap, uh, this one uh, actually kind of I, I wouldn't say like was forgotten, but was being put on hold for too long. So I'm actually surprised that we are adding it only now because it was supposed to be in the game much sooner and would make sense much sooner. All right, I guess hopefully that answered your question. So we'll be able to put those down in whatever like the maps that exactly. we've got and stuff. So mm -hmm. we'll have safe, some safe areas to spawn in for whatever the event is going to be. That was the idea. Uh, like. Uh, that the, the games in a space engine should be that you have this big solar system, you have few safe zones, you spawn in the safe zone, the safe zone should be big enough so that you can actually leave the safe zone unharmed, you know, and they cannot like uh, surround you. And uh, then you can do some stuff. And uh, this was like the design principle. Nice. Uh, let's see if we've got another one here. With the um, the keen sort of official servers, it sounds like you've got some plans to be running those long term. Have you got any plans for sort of how exactly that's going to be funded? Is there anything planned longer down the line for sort of say after release? Because obviously server costs are expensive; they'll build up. Yeah. Uh, so I, I mentioned this in the beginning uh, when I started to talk about these servers. Is that for the first month we will pay for you know for these servers? And then we will have to figure out how how to fund these servers or how to pay for these servers. There are many options, uh, uh, but I kind of don't want to discuss them uh, right now here, all of them. And uh, we don't know yet, you know, that's the thing. And uh, uh, the estimation is that it can be something around $10,000 per month, which is not something that would kill us, but still, you know, it's something that would go out of our uh, pocket, so it would be good to find a way how to fund this, you know, how to get some revenue that can pay for this server, so that we can also have more servers in the future, and maybe, and this is kind of not covered right now, but uh, have more professional support and maintenance for the servers 24-7, because right now in the beginning, it will be our people, uh, the, you know, the programmers, the testers, who will be watching the servers 24-7, kind of, and uh, but uh, we as a team are not really prepared for this 24 hour 24 7 uh, support uh, operation so uh, if you want to do this professionally we also need to invest in this direction and then you probably need a funding for this thing uh, there and was I, a question about ju an, just an older thing. one more thing oh, uh, someone is surprised with the price uh, uh, the price is not just for a bunch of servers, like let's say if there will be like 100 servers or something like this, then it can get to 10,000 or so. But again, I, I don't remember these numbers, so take it with, uh, you know, like caution. And it's just like that, that we're calculating how many players are usually uh, in a space engineers at one moment, you know, and usually we go between 2,000 and 5,000 uh, people uh, being in the game right now and this this changes uh, during the day like everyone who knows steam charts can see this graph 
And so the worst case scenario is that there is 5,000 people in Space Engineers, and from statistics we know that half of them are playing multiplayer. So that's 2,500 people in the worst case uh, playing multiplayer. And if you have uh, 16 players per server, or let's say 32, but we're counting with 16, that's something like, let's say, 300 or so uh, servers, you know, that uh, uh, Space Engineers dedicated servers that need to be on all the time. That's the, again, worst case scenario. Uh, and we will test it during the first month. I'm pretty certain as well that pretty much all Space Engineers players would agree with me when I say if multiplayer was as good as some of what we've experienced in this test, there would be a much higher percentage playing multiplayer as well. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are just kind of frustrated with it at the moment are really keen for yeah. this patch in particular. Yeah. I agree, definitely. From what we've seen from first reactions, definitely people are enjoying what's the update. Hopefully, it's going to come like so. I can see it's being really good, but you know, let's see how it goes. One of the ones from chat was about air tightness. Now, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but I think Marek will probably explain a bit better uh, about air tightness in the experimental mode. Uh, so, the ATAR air tightness is uh, implemented in Space Engineers. We implemented it about, let's say, three years ago. And uh, the thing is that there are many edge cases where it can be very performance expensive, you know, because the game needs to be calculating uh, where the air is leaving some closed area. And uh, it's some kind of, and I don't want to go into details too much, but uh, it's some kind of like fat fill algorithm. So it needs to be like, you know, it detects if uh, this area is empty or, or not detects more and more and so on. So it can get, get can get kind of like exponentially more complex if you have larger areas or uh, more holes and so on. And uh, the thing is that uh, we think it will be out of the scope of current space engineers to do this in a way that we can guarantee 100% good performance on any kind of ships you can build uh, and then implement uh, air pressure or air tightness into this ship. So for this reason, we decided to put it to experimental mode uh, for people who still want to play with the uh, air tightness and understand that it's unfinished feature, uh, unoptimized feature. And uh, but because it will not be part of the official uh, feature set of Space Engineers, it, it shouldn't be part of the official game. But still, because we want to support the people who are used to this feature and who know this feature and want to use it, it still will stay in the game. I know that probably not everyone will be super happy about this, but this is one of the attributes of uh, doing early access and being open, you know, with all the features that sometimes you release some feature and sometimes you need to take out some feature. And uh, as we say at the end of every video, Space Engineers is uh, still in development, everything is subject to change. So this is one of the things. So well, we'll and it's about. nice that you're not removing anything. It's simply being put into a section where we yeah. can still access it. That's not, you know, it's not the same as it being completely taken it, away. Yeah, yeah. This, it's fine in many... This is also very important. And, uh, we didn't want to take it out. Uh, we just want to be really clear about that it's not official feature. Uh, we cannot support it or we cannot uh, say, you know, like we cannot stand behind this feature. But what is this is the good? feature that we're talking about for, for air tightness, particularly? Yeah, this is air tightness. Is that official? Yeah, but okay. also, for example, spiders, you know, that's not something that uh, we think is the official version of, or, or it should be the part of the official game. And uh, on the other side, like a more positive side, I think that in the future uh, we will revisit this and uh, we'll re-implement the air tightness to be just seem like flawless and fast with any kind of design that you will build, N not just now. Uh, speaking of official features, uh, well, I saw one question there about the old exploration feature, which would take, uh, as I understood it, would take builds that were submitted to the workshop of a certain size and as long as they were vanilla and potentially put them into people's games to find. Is this something that uh, we're, we're going to see in the multiplayer servers or is this going to be another, um, I guess, not official option? Hmm. I think right now it's unofficial, or I mean, sorry, uh, I think right now it's in the experimental mode. And uh, regarding like these changes, uh, or regarding stuff that is more about survival and experiencing the game and stuff like that, uh, that's our next, 
update that we will be working on, but don't take it like the next update is the survival. Just think about this like the next uh, update is about focusing on the game playing experience, balancing stuff, making the game easier to access for new players and so on. Yeah. And uh, maybe some people will not be happy because they don't like when I don't want to talk about some, some things, but again, uh, it's still open in, in our team and uh, I don't want to say something which will not be true in, uh, let's say, three months, you know, so I would not rather talk Fair that much uh, into the details. But in principle, if I'm talking about long term future of space engineers or whatever, you know, we will do next or like where this this whole engineering genre will evolve. Uh, I think the idea that people uh, build their creations and we put them to the game is something that actually I consider a core that uh, the next game or some future game should have this feature even as uh, core mechanics in the game. You know, people building stuff in one big world, sharing together, and it somehow works. You know, we provide the infrastructure that these things work. and. Uh, so I think it's it's actually very important. Very cool. I know that was one of the features that I was really excited for. You guys kind of started putting it in. There's like, oh man, I'll be able to come across things that people have built and give the world a little bit more life in your maps. Uh, one question that's come up a bunch that I would be amiss to ask, though I don't think you guys are going to be able to answer it. Uh, when will the community be able to grab, uh, get their hands on a release version of the multiplayer? Like finally out and about. And so what do, what do you think? Like. What would be your guess? <laughs> Shit. Guys. Oh, what's what's the question? Uh, what do you think? Like, what would be your bet? When do you On think? When it's coming out? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. I mean, this whole thing was kind of a big surprise to me. So I, I would like to say, you know, as soon as you guys can push that button so we can start playing in multiplayer with, you know, 16 plus people uh, would be my choice. But uh, so, so you are happy with the state it is right now? You know, this multiplayer this, version. This current right. state is is so much better than what we've got currently on our current update. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that we're not having fun with that current update, but this would open up an entire world of new possibilities. Yeah. We've all got so many plans at the moment that just are sitting basically on the idea of when this update drops, I'm going to do X and X and X and X. There's a big list of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and it, and it feels like it's at that point already. I mean, all of our experience with this, I mean, obviously it, it's all of our experience with this on, on your servers, and I haven't had a chance yet to experience it outside of that, but your servers have been great. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we're doing, what I'm doing right now, like with, with this many players, we've got three massive capital ships flying around, firing huge barrages of missiles. I've got some guy trying to get on top of my ship, and it's, I've, I've just been quiet in the background here, but it's been awesome, just like taking these, this kind of like uh, the space combat scenario, which is just kind of, it's just random stuff at this point. It's nothing, we're just kind of flying around shooting each other, but it's, uh, it's been really, really great, and the sim speed's pretty much holding solid at 1.0. It, it did drop a second ago for some reason, but it dropped and then it came back up. And I think one of the key things about this, uh, the changes that have been made is the sim speed recovers. Because sure, if you go into an unlimited world with no uh, limits, you might pace in some crazy stuff and you will cause problems. But what, what the great thing about this update is, is that the sim speed will, will actually recover now. Because in the past, you could like delete a lot of things and the sim speed, maybe due to memory leaks or whatever, the sim speed would still be terrible. But on the whole now, uh, the sim speed gets back up to 1.0 quite quickly after something bad. I mean, right right now, like something's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I've seen do this is stuff crashing into voxels. Yeah. It's the only yes. thing I've seen do this sort of slowdown. Uh-huh, yeah. It's Go back to the question, yeah, uh, yeah. Aaron, thank you so much for asking at Space Industries, but uh, what? so what? what is the, the word? Are we gonna get any? Hey, we didn't answer the question, did we? Yeah. No, <laughs> no. I'm not letting it, I'm not, I, gotta, I gotta push it because this community is over here like, hey Shaq, you yeah, want yeah. it, give me the thing. So I think it will be very soon and uh, we will review the results of this public test on Monday and then we'll make the decision. So, uh, and then when we make the decision, it's pretty fast. So uh, okay. I hope that's enough. And uh, again, I don't want to give some false hopes, you know, or anything like this. I think we're pretty close to the release and uh, Again, uh, Monday, Monday we will do the review and we'll see. And we'll, maybe there are still things that we would like to like change a little bit or maybe like polish some details on this mm -hmm. multiplayer. Mostly it, will, it would be uh, user interface stuff. 
and uh, but uh, on the other side there is this thing that while we will be doing so people would would not be like people who don't care about user experience would not be uh, enjoying this uh, this new multiplier code so uh, that's one good reason why the the update should come out rather sooner than later uh and this is actually a question that's come up a few times uh, caleb's asking and I, I kind of i'm curious myself now that we have the possibility of, of lots of players on a server um and, and spending a lot of time building stuff uh, will there ever be some kind of a claim system or a way for us to protect our things that we have built when we log out that that offline rating is what they're worried about basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Uh, well, uh, maybe I will not answer exactly like if we will do this or not. Uh, um, because, yeah, sometimes we just need to like consider mul multiple options and so on. But one idea uh, that I like that the guys in medieval team have for some future future update or for something is uh, a system where uh, if you want to fight with someone, you need to start an official or you need to declare a war. And so, you know, like war is not something just just randomly like shooting on some guy. But actually, if you want to do some damage, you need to uh, declare a war. There is, let's say, some timeouts, you know, and things like this. So you cannot wage and stop war and wage war and stop war. Uh, you know, there needs to be some, some rules to this. And uh, another benefit can be that you can get notified. Like, imagine that you are offline, you know, like you left your game, you are, let's say, in your job or in school, and someone just declared war on you. And you get notification on by email or something. So you leave the job, you know, get to your computer, start playing Space Engineers and protect your, uh, your belongings. So that's one idea. So uh, this was more like describing what is our thinking, but regarding saying or promising how exactly this will work or how we will implement it and when we will implement it that's also a major question uh that's still open okay cool i know something that we were talking about was uh curious how big like maybe safe zones could get so we could have an admin safe zone uh, an entire base or something for a player faction Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, uh, finding route, you know, routes around it until official tools come out to allow us to do this. Joel, do you know how big the safe zone can be right now? Well, actually, I was going to show the safe zone feature okay. off right now, so we could do so this. So let's check okay. because, like, my design was that they can be big, you know, like kilometers, and but most of the time I saw only smaller, like let's say 100 meters, 200 meters. Yeah, currently the limit is 500. I personally 500. also would like it to be kilometers big yeah. because then you could have because like. That was the design, you know. Uh, originally, right. Yeah. Like locking down a planet would be nice. Just yep, be like, okay, yep, this is yep. the safe building zone for the noobs. Yep. Don't go blowing it up. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and the reasoning for this was that uh, it's not just having big area, but also having a big surface, you know, where you can leave this uh, safe area so they cannot surround you. So what we do is uh, we, you come to wherever you want. As a server admin, you come to this new menu under the admin screen called uh, safe zones. And I just click new safe zone. And that's now called my safe zone. I can rename this and can call this safe zone... Uh, main safe zone and this is just for my purposes if they have lots and lots of safe zones i know which one is which so i don't have to have like so i can have red safe zone blue safe zone and this has created a, a cubicle uh safe zone around this station so right now it's actually not active because it's gray and also it won't work um it won't uh, protect the whole station right so i can come into this menu and i can even change the axis each axis here like this you see like this so it can be kind of more custom shape or you can change it to be spherical and the radius here can go all the way up to 500 uh, meters which in fact covers nearly this entire asteroid cluster so this could be a perfect example for like um, a server hub like you could have like a, a server hub which when you first join a server you are protected from being attacked and griefed and so on and you can kind of get your uh, where when you first get your bearings when you first join a server this is just an example of how big it could be but again Marek we could talk to the guys and see if we can make it bigger because I think the potential of making it bigger would also open up some cool stuff and Joel uh, I guess you can have more safe zones right yeah yeah you okay. can, I don't think so maybe you can like have more of them and create a bigger space uh, yeah so you can do that and you can let me just show the the uh, filtering system here so what you have is 
you can change between different modes for each of these things. So I can either have a whitelist mode, which will only allow in these certain people, or I can switch the mode of the players to blacklist. So that means everyone's allowed in mm -hmm. except these people, which is obvious, right? Um, and then you can also add permissions for individual uh, factions. So I can have like the United Blue Empire, for example, is allowed in this faction. That's on whitelist mode. So you can see it changed from blacklist of players, whitelist for factions. And we also have uh, individual grids. So maybe only Red Ship 101 is allowed to be in this safe zone or only... Uh, you know, um, colony transport ship is allowed to go inside this. So there's a lot of potential here. And of course, there's also floating objects, which is a slightly weirder one. So now that we've allowed anyone in, what we can do is, Chef also put on the, the mode to blacklist here for the grids, because otherwise I think this will, yeah. So if we set the grids to blacklist as well, oh no, no, not the factions, that'll be bad. Um, and in fact, we can do it so we can put the Octo Dock in and nothing else there. So what will happen is, Matic, now when I click Zone Enabled, the grids that aren't allowed in here will get forced out. So... You mean enemies? Yeah, so that... I'm actually that... watching it change colors here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> From inside. Can you make it invisible? You just spun me out. No, yeah, you can't. Let's check this. Yeah. You can't make it invisible. Um, and again, this is this is such a new feature, but yeah. I'm, I think once you release it, and even now, we can start gathering feedback about it. And I've even got some really cool ideas for what we could do with this, uh, this safe sign like, thing. Guys, you think that it's just, uh, it should be either more transparent or not visible, right? It should be an option yeah. to view it. Like, it I mean, I, like it, a, if you're going to do kilometers wide, it'd be nice if you're just like passing into the area, just have it come up to the corner that you've entered, you know, mm -hmm. whatever they put as the name of it. So, you know, you're in like space or safe territory or whatever you want to call it. Just to give you some indication, but you don't need it actually like visible mm -hmm. coloring the entire skyscape. Let's see, at least that's it seems that way. You've left the safe zone. Not even oh, tells no, you when you walk through. It seems like something you could maybe add to one of the UI toggles, a bit like you have with um, antennas. Yeah. You know, have have the safe zone toggleable to turn yeah. just turn off the visibility. That's good. Idea. Once you know it's there. There was a question about now with multiplayer and more players. Is there um, any? I, I, this isn't really multiplayer related, I guess, but I'm gonna go and drop it in here anyways. Um, you planning on having more for generation of like you've got planets, anything like gas giants, or actually have the the sun no longer just an object out in the distance that a uh, light source, but actually something in the system uh, with us that we can fly around. Spatial stuff. So, if the sun will be an actual object? Object, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Uh, like, uh, maybe sometime in the future. Uh, and I'm thinking. Uh, no. Like we have, uh, I think the conversation went on uh, in chat was was basically running of okay if you're going to have safe zones maybe you can have safe systems for new players uh, and then once they've used their jump drive to go to a new space that's maybe PVP oriented now they're going into you know, you know what you're getting into because you're going into this little area of the map um, and have it deno donated by maybe a, a different colored star or something there's a a whole talk about it in here. <laughs> So what I've just done here, Marek, I've put a safe zone within another safe zone, so you can have all kinds of rules. And this is like my own little personal bubble. So only I'm allowed in, and you can see Wasted being catapulted back there. He's not allowed in here. Um, I've tried to shoot him, I've tried to grind him, it's all disabled. I can't get him. <laughs> so, so, so back to this sun yeah. question, uh, and also the, the like size of the solar system and uh, like having more systems and so on. So right now, uh, in Space Engineers, you have this big solar system, and everything that is inside is uh, is a uh, like a regular object, you know. So planet is a planet. It's not just some fake object on the background. It's like real planet you can land on and even dig through and so on. Uh, the only like this far distant object is uh, is the, the the sun, and you know these little stars and uh, and things like that. And for now, I think it would stay like this. And uh, because even this solar system is big enough for <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> Uh, so, like having more, more solar systems uh, in this moment uh, would not probably bring uh, that much new. Plus, also there is this thing that we are in a phase where we actually want to finish uh, or finish. Uh, we want to polish and uh, get space engineers to the proper state. So, adding new features uh, would not actually help us. But in the future, of course, uh, we have an idea for a game, and I. 
I was already talking about this game three years ago, so maybe some people remember. And uh, in that game, having more systems would actually make sense. But that game is actually more than just about uh, having different spatial system where you can be. So that's a totally different story. But for now, I think even the solar system is big enough for for uh, like all people in the universe. It's one that's come up in chat a couple of times. Um to do with like features in experimental mode are the ones in that in that sort of side of things now ones that you plan to not develop further and, and are happy with or either happy with how they sit or vice versa have decided like with air tightness that they're just kind of not going to work out uh the second thing so uh I, i'm not saying that all of the features that are currently in experimental uh, mode may not move out of the experimental mode because there can be some exceptions when we'll like review them again uh, but uh, so it's like you know like maybe there are some exceptions but in principle uh, they should stay in experimental mode and if you'll touch them and redo them it will be like in a really far future not right now because uh, and this is just like practical explanation if you start, for example, working on uh, air tightness, uh, it means we'll probably not work on something else, something which is mm -hmm. probably more important for players. And of course, we can do many things in parallel in King, but uh, sometimes uh, focus and the focus of the entire team is more important than more features. Like, for example, I think that what we did with this multiplier wouldn't be done if it wasn't main focus of our team for last. I don't know, six months. You know, yeah, about six months, isn't it? Yeah. Basically since the visual tweaks. And of course, it was important for us even before that because we were still doing something with the multiplier. But uh, it wasn't focus of the entire space team, which is around 20 people. Uh, it was usually focus of one guy, two guys, and sometimes in like once in a month or, you know, that kind of frequency. But now it was really focus of uh, almost 20 people for six months and uh, they didn't do that much of other things and uh, although like we did some little things here and there and you will see them but uh, I think uh, I think if we did, didn't do this focused thing uh, the multiplier wouldn't look right now we had everyone all hands on deck yeah. didn't we yeah because yeah, yeah and really, it's a really dramatic different. difference yeah, yeah. and this is actually what I liked uh, in Keen uh, like in the old days and then when we were bigger and we were starting to paralyze things, I couldn't get my hand on everything. So I started to like lose focus, of course, and also to lose the like my hand on different things. So I also wasn't super happy. So now when there is kind of like less people and we do one thing after another, not in a parallel way, but in a more serial way, I'm also more happier because I can, you know, like give them my feedback, test it, I don't need to focus on like 20 features in parallel. I can focus on one main feature uh, and then we'll like after multiplier, we'll focus on another big thing and so on. So it's also also better for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think when we are doing it like this, you know, like four years ago, three years ago, uh, people are happy because we are developing one thing after another, you know, these weekly updates. And I think it was because we are really focused on one or two or three things maximum at the same time and uh, that was the way how I think we should be doing it so uh, so again uh, the, the original question was for example air tightness so the answer is that uh, we need to prioritize what to focus on and we cannot focus on everything we really need to pick few things and rather less than more and then focus on them and, and uh, finish them to like super quality that makes makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. Uh, people are getting real excited for the multiplayer because you can see all the, they're talking about all like possibilities now what they want to do in it um one question that was asked by flip uh drifter and i'm sorry i lost the third one there uh it's it, it, all right guys i'll ask but i don't i don't think you're gonna get much um the idea of transferring between servers has come up a couple of times um like having some kind of ability to go from one server to the other with maybe a small build um have you guys ever thought or yeah, uh, I, I think wanted this, to do this anything is a great like idea. That. Uh, 
and I would keep it open for some future game. Not for this particular in installation of Space Engineers, because, uh, you know, uh, the game is almost done. But for the future installation, uh, I think it's perfect. Like having one big world, uh, you know, permanent universe, or actually permanent like many universes and traveling between them uh, seamlessly, like without the join screen, you know, like just from the game through some gates or, or anything like that. And <coughs> I think it makes very good sense. Uh, and I, 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 it's one of the things that we will look uh, in some future game, future installation. Now, now when you say that Space Engineers, um, you know, finishing up the game, what's the requirements before you guys feel like that's that's that point? Like, what are you what are you aiming for uh, that would be considered finishing up the game? And uh, you don't mean like hardware requirements, right? You mean like uh, the oh, no, 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 hardware requirements. I mean like actually like features. Like, what what are you shooting for that makes you feel like okay, this is the point where Space Engineers in its, um, I mean, how long has it been now? Six years. Uh, it's been a while. You guys have been even. I've been following this since uh, you guys dropped on Indie TV those those early posts on the news. Uh, when when did you hit that point where you're like, you know, this is this is the feature list that uh, it's feature complete. That's what I'm looking for. The word feature complete. I would say that right now it's almost feature complete. Uh, there are probably few like details that we will add, but uh, I would say they are kind of like minor. Or maybe another way how to put this is. Uh, there may be some new mechanics or changes in some existing mechanics, but only as a tool for how to kind of close it, you know, to make it one consistent uh, system, to space engineer one consistent uh, thing. I, I don't expect that we'll add some super new features or that we'll uh, make any revolutionary feature changes in the game. Uh, I just think that uh, we are consolidating things, optimizing, uh, of course, bug fixing. We are also trying to make the game a little bit more uh, user intuitive, uh, so it's more friendly for new players. And uh, yeah, that's it. Cool. You guys got any other questions? Um, I think I might for a minute. I'm going to struggle to find ones that are due to, to specifically due to multiplayer now. But I mean, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of questions, you, but it's a lot that aren't really multiplayer focused. We're not ignoring you guys. It's just that we got it's got to be multiplayer related. Got to keep it on 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 point. Uh, questions about enemies, for 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 I guess for multi I guess it's fairly fairly multiplayer related. I mean there are um, pirate spawns in the default game where we see. Uh, any more enhancements to these multiplayer servers and the potential for uh, a little PVE content in them and a uh, little environmental threats outside of the... Uh, oh. mm -hmm. Crashing your ship. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever watched my stream, there I, you go. I, I cannot answer this like completely right now because we need to review, you know, like how, how are these things implemented, where are the edge cases and uh, where are the limits of these uh, AIs and, and then we'll see like I don't consider AIs to be major uh, feature in current space engineers, you know, because the main thing about space engineers is basically almost done, uh, and that, that is, that is uh, the physics, uh, solid, robust physics, working in multiplier, people being able to build all these engineering or to engineer all these creations, and so this is for me step one, and uh, we are almost there, like it's almost done, and working as as intended and working as we kind of like dreamed five years ago and so that's first step that's like uh, Kenata was actually describing this thing with the with the ball and the, some specialized ball and so on so we are just going to finish this one universal ball where you can uh, create uh, like anything you want but there is no direction you know like it's up to you what you want to create and so this was for us always the step one, you know, like let's finish this properly and uh, and so on. And the step two will be start to taking it in some, let's say narrow or some specialized directions. And we'll look on this, we'll start working on this uh, after this first stage, uh, after this first uh, like sandbox experience, like works flawlessly in, uh, in single player, multiplayer, and uh, yeah. Uh, 
right, cool. That, that was that was that was my questions there. Yeah, you gotta gotta, gotta bring in a multiplayer, guys. There's a lot of questions in here about non-multiplayer related topics. If you guys if you see any from we're bouncing around no, on the moon, you see any from the chat? Mark, there is one question ahead. in the chat from Ark True Peruk, and he's asking about uh, some scripts and probably programmable blocks or maybe some some mods, but I think maybe even programmable blocks. So Zach behind it. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think we moved the programmable blocks to uh, experimental mode. And uh, the reason for this is that, uh, like, of course, if you have some very simple ex uh, programmable block, it doesn't cost much. But people started to use programmable blocks, for example, for rendering, you know, these banners. Like, they have some bitmap picture and they render it in the game. And the way it's being done, it's uh, kind of like not efficient, you know, from the from the performance perspective, because every little pixel in that banner uh, is rendered not like pixels on GPU, you know, where it's super fast, but actually something almost like a symbol, you know, that you need to process and, and the rendering and so on. And if people uh, don't realize this, or users of these programming blocks don't realize this, uh, they can and they will copy paste many of these uh, banner uh, blocks programming blocks to the game and then the performance can go down. So uh, the thing is that we didn't put almost any limits into programming blocks, but it also means that we cannot guarantee what people will do with them. There's a disadvantage. I think one of the dangers is when, yeah, and when a new player plays, uh, just joins the server and then the, the server might be running low and because the script's out of date or something and they won't understand that, and that's, that's kind of... Yeah, this is a good point. We can't control yeah. the, the, yeah. the scripts One so One thing that was like worried us, worrying us very much with uh, multiplayer, and especially when we are talking about creative mode, like the server running in creative mode, uh, was that uh, someone in that world can start doing something, you know, some actions that the other players don't see, they are not aware of that he's doing this, and the performance go, goes down and they don't understand and they think the game is bad, not optimized and, you know, like Keen can do uh, proper programming and all these things. And uh, whereas if they are doing it personally, you know, copy-pasting and it lags for a second, they can kind of understand it's probably because I'm copy-pasting. But if you're just playing in some world and someone, you know, somewhere where you don't see is copy-pasting or running some super expensive scripts or something or air titans, you know, like pushing it to its limits, you don't see it and the game runs slow and you think, you know, like the game is, is bad. So uh, this is the reason why we put these risky features to the experimental where it will be accessible by more experienced players who can understand this but what is also important is that new players they will need to go through some steps in order to get into this not so friendly or not so safe uh, experience with the game and we really want to make the game also fun to play for completely new players Well, maybe another thing that, that I can also uh, talk about is that this multiplayer actually is not just about multiplayer. It, it was mm. also a lot about uh, performance optimizations. And actually it started with performance optimizations because like, why would you working on fixing, like doing prediction this or that in multiplayer if your performance, you know, if the like performance of individual blocks or uh, collisions and things like that, uh, will change. So we started by optimizing. Uh, in the beginning, we had, we said a like KPI, you know, this K performance indicator that what we want to achieve is 16 players on a dedicated servers, uh, each player having one car, one one uh, one six wheeled car, and this must whatever they do, you know, like if they will be crashing each other, whatever whatever they do, it should be running uh, uh, one sync speed. And so we achieved this, and uh, then we are looking for more scenarios because it's not just about wheels, you know, there can be other things. And uh, we're just looking for scenarios that can uh, put down our target of 16 players doing whatever they want. Uh, some of the things that we cannot control, just like this uh, programmable scripts or air tightness, we put to experimental mode. And uh, yeah. So in general, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll, did, we'll do comparison of the performance of the game, like uh, how it is now versus, you know, six months ago, 
I'm really, like, really curious uh, where the performance increased, but just from seeing the game, how it behaves, I think in some like uh, areas of the game, it probably went 10 times, maybe 100 times faster. In some areas, of course, like we didn't improve because, let's say, it wasn't needed. Mm -hmm. But in many areas, I think we, we improved the game much. And usually, it's not uh, like how some people sometimes think that... Uh, we cannot optimize something or so and uh, sometimes you know like when you are doing experimental projects sometimes you implement some feature in the bare bone version of that feature you know just some minimum viable prototype of the feature because you just want to see how it works you know from gameplay perspective if people actually want it and because you also know that then you will get back to this feature and optimize it and uh, as time went you know we basically put up together a lot of features that were done quickly, but not optimized. And last two years, what we are doing mostly is optimizing, finishing, consolidating these features. So that's one thing. And uh, yeah, so so again, uh, the, the multiplier, this multiplier update will be about performance and also about multiplier code. I was just thinking, and that's really good because, of course, not everyone's interested in multiplayer. Some people do like to play on their own in their own worlds. So and I think that's what's really great is the fact that this update, even though it's it's kind of primarily that, I think it's actually really good for people who aren't interested in multiplayer because everyone will, everyone will see a increase in performance in their worlds. And also, um, the other thing was, I had something I was going to say about that. Um, performance and... Yeah, just the fact that you say the fact I was uh, the fact that every block was kind of analyzed to see, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah for the species. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Two little around on the planet on a motorcycle. Let's because see. space engineering. So, Joe, this it. is still the the same. No, this is different. A different world. We are yeah. on Mars. Okay, and still this drill is still going on. Mm-hmm. By the way, Peter wants to use this drill, or maybe some similar, but maybe this one, for uh, kind of like stress testing the game, like uh, we'll use this auto test tool and let it run for uh, two days, you know, and we'll see what it does with the game. That'd be cool, yeah. It's it's one of those things that, I mean, I left it running, of course. I, it's It takes quite a long time to get, to get uh, through, right? <laughs> Um, and we're already testing this, you know, like uh, how far it can get. I don't remember the numbers, but it went pretty far. But not that much because the, the planets are usually so big. Yeah. So is there any, uh, any more questions from the chat now? I mean, if you guys have asked one earlier, ask it again and uh, we'll see if you can pull it out from there. You might, you might have asked a question and you missed it, so just ask away and we'll see. <laughs> yes, one that did come up a few times. I already know the answer, but I'll let you guys answer this one. Is there any plans for a Linux version of the dedicated server? Uh, not officially, and not now. Like again, like you never know what will happen in the future, but not right now because you know just time priorities. Let's see, here. I'm trying to find a. Uh... Yeah, it's not multiplayer, guys. <laughs> so uh, Ronin okay. is asking if we have pet badger. So that's a good question. And uh, he's probably talking about honey badger. So we don't have him and probably will never have. Although kind of like we got some proposals that we can buy a badger. And like the one that uh, got, let's say, like abandoned by by parents or you know uh, damaged by by hunters or something like this. But the thing is that uh, it's kind of wild animal, and uh, uh, like taking it to home or to some like small you know enclosure, I don't think it's natural habitat for such animal. No, it's quite it's quite. Honey badgers, they they need like big space. And they need to own it, you know, because they are like really like alpha, you know. So uh, this is the reason why we don't want to do this to, to any budger. <laughs> we would want to support some budger, you know, like 
uh, in his mission or whatever uh, they want to achieve, but uh, in some other way. Yeah, and they are, they are also like master escape artists, so I think even if we had uh, Honey Badger, like, he would, uh, he would escape. There is no way we would be able to, to keep him. <laughs> that is a pretty good one. Um, will there, is there any plans for a way of respawning on a small ship? Because especially with servers, if you go anywhere too far away from your, like, main ship, it... It's kind of limiting the range because you're just going to lose your small ship if you die. That's a good question. I think in in the original design, we had this uh, medical base, uh, medical medical bay, or like rescue pod for the large ships. That was the design, and uh, so not not right now. Hey, wait, so let me try to land on that. I was thinking <laughs> the same. Yeah. Oh, you're already coming in. I see you, the helicopter. Yep. Uh, you might want to wait a sec, there's some bumpy, bumpy ground. Let's just do it on hard mode. We got this. Any land are there any like particular... This? this is a question that's come a few times. Uh, are there any particular um, mods that have popped up recently that you guys are just kind of really blown away by? Um, I know this isn't multiplayer specifically related, but it kind of is, because I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, I can't wait to try out a few mods in my multiplayer server. <laughs> We're almost down. I was down, but there's no uh, landing gear on this, so I'm going to bounce up whenever you... Unless I turn the damp. Whoa. That's not bad. You're down. So and no landing gear, so you're kind of rolling around. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hang on. Everybody make some space. I'm coming in. <laughs> We're all landing on this on a moving grid. Uh, here's the Y wing. <laughs> of course. Black it's because of a Y wing. There's a, there's right. a problem uh, arising, folks. Oh, yeah. So Mayday. Go leader's oh. got a problem here. There's a hill. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> it's all part of the plan. Take a left. I don't have landing gear on this either, do I? Oh, boy. That's fine. <laughs> This is fine. So, no! back to this question, uh, like definitely I saw some mods and, and we are sometimes uh, like posting them on our social channels. I just cannot remember any any right now from top of my head, maybe Joel. Mods that have been posting recently. Oh, um, you're actually better off. Uh, Navball, there's one that you guys linked on Twitter. Oh uh, yeah, the one? Navball's really good. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, it, was, it was pretty pretty awesome by Ultimate D. It's a really, really nice mod that gives you that nav ball which you can place on large ships. Or and do you want to try it here? Uh, we could, except I, we can't be having, we'd have to restart the server, so it wouldn't be like multiplayer related, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we can probably, it's probably due for another stream we do just like mod showcase, right? Good point. But it's not going to be on this server right now, so. With this big update, can we... Uh, assume that many many of our favorite mods may and have to go under a, a serious update. Um, I'm not sure how much has changed behind the scenes for modders mm -hmm. with this update coming out. Um, it, is it so substantial that we may see a lot of mods be uh, broken? Or I, I don't think so. But um, like you never know, you know, because sometimes something change, and also uh, some people, uh, some mods may be relying on some let's call it like undocumented features in space engineers or some unofficial, basically kind of like injecting something, you know, and hacking something here and there. And that, of course, then we, if we change the underlying thing or the thing that this mod is kind of like exploiting, uh, it will stop working. So the risk is always there. Like part of our uh, testing checklist is testing few kind of like the most... Uh, we have a list of the most popular mods yeah, that are used most by people. Mods. And the tester, testers are testing this, but uh, so we make sure that these mods are not broken. Of course, sometimes uh, we cannot guarantee this because there is some like fundamental change. Uh, but in principle, I think this uh, this update should be about performance and and multiplier, and not about changing the API and things like that. But but again, if people have mods that are kind of like hacking the game, then uh, it's hard to guarantee that we will not break those modes. There, I think there Fair are... enough. Understandable at a game in development. Yeah. Just, uh, just curious if this was like a substantial change where we can expect everybody to have to like go back and... At, at least stuff. there are no visual changes, you know. I mean, there is a little bit one. Maybe some people will be happy with this that 
we played a little bit with the visual, you know, that HDR bloom and this camera effect and things like that. So it's less um, dramatic, you know, this this camera things. And uh, but it's just few parameters, you know. It shouldn't be. Uh, it's not like a big overhaul thing. And for everybody who's joining, I see you guys in the chat. Uh, official release date has not been announced. I know that question comes up a lot. We've already, that was like the, one of the first ones we asked. I think we so Wait, can we get our hands on it. The only answer we have is 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 the answer that everyone dreads. It's the soon. It's the soon TM. TM. <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, natural caves on planets. That's not multiplayer related, guys. But I, I get where you're coming from. That, that exploration aspect of it. But uh, yeah, keep it multiplayer. Someone in the chat did, did just ask. They said, question is by Birdie D. I have a powerful server ready to host SE. I plan a persistent 24-7, uh, seven days a week world. Does MP or multiplayer have any issues being live for days slash weeks at a time? So I think the last test you guys did was for a whole week. Did you notice any sort of performance decrease when a world has been running for, say, an entire week, opposed to just the previous 24-hour mm -hmm. tests? So what is good is that uh, there are a few things. I think we still need to do some some little work on this, uh, but in principle it works well. And uh, what is good is that uh, the performance is not like continuously decreasing, you know. So uh, that's one thing. What can sometimes uh, be not decreasing but actually increasing is the memory consumption because we still, as far as I know, we still have there one maybe maybe more uh, memory leaks. So. Uh, the memory consumption of that world can be growing, 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 you know, ad infinitum. And, but it happens only in some special cases, which we don't even know, which is the special case. So we are trying to investigate this and, and it's the tough one. So this can be something like working against. But the, the good thing is that once the server restarts, you know, it's clean again and uh, it's fast and the memory consumption is, is low. And so it's sometimes good to set the servers on periodical, let's say every four hours uh, restarts. And then I think it can run for as long as possible, but still we will we'll look into this later, you know, when we'll have many servers running and so on. And one thing that we'll be releasing uh, with this update is a, is a tool, like a new tool that you can use for monitoring uh, the dedicated servers. So if you have one, you will see some profiling of your one server. If you have many, just like us, you will see, let's say, 16 servers. Uh, some people may know this, like, you know, you have this task manager in, in Windows, so something similar just on our servers. And there we can see the sim speed, like by individual time slots or like, let's say every seconds or so. Uh, memory consumption, what else? You know, this basic, basic, uh, basic statistics. And you see if they are, uh, within like reasonable limits or if they are go growing uh, without control, like this memory leak, you know, it can just grow without control. So this is what we are using for uh, like monitoring the, uh, the health of the servers and people will be able to use this. So, so back to the question, uh, I think it will be possible to run the servers for days and weeks. Maybe with some restarts here and there, but eventually in a long term, even without the restarts, after we fix like every little edge case. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> just trying to test it out. It's I don't of, know what that thing was, but it flew great. <laughs> it's, it's a really weird thing. It's got like, it doesn't have thrusters in all directions. Cause it's, if I try and place it in here, it's only got thrust, uh, thrusters facing one way. And how it turns by these set these oh, damn it. <laughs> so you see here, if I do shift, it, it I'm not doing very well here trying to rotate. It's quite hard to get going. But the um, when I'm using the Q and E keys, it's actually rotating the uh, the center grid, and that's also rotating the squares around it to point the thrusters mm -hmm. where they need to th where they need to go. But um, it's quite hard to control, especially with lots two thrusters. I'm just testing the various stuff to see how it feels in, in the uh, in the server here. Yeah, that's. The <laughs> my, I've, I definitely haven't been uh, making my flying skills look any good with this uh, stream, have I? <sighs> Where are you guys all at then? Because I think we kind of got spread out now. Oh, oh, we're actually back at the start. 
Uh, heading back to the spawn area. Okay, Federation's cool. Federation's turned oh, a lot of faster than I planned on it. This is fine. Oh, man. Federation has crashed. <laughs> that was intended. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Hey, Marek, look at the, uh, the hole here, Marek. Hmm? Look at the hole. It's been going while we've been talking. Oh, my goodness. Successful landing. Oh, oh it's quite deep down there. Yeah, I'm, sort of, I'm going to measure it here. So, with the monitoring tool you were mentioning with the servers, is there any plans for that to become sort of a, a, a control tool as well, some sort of control panel for the server, help people perhaps deploy their own dedicated instead of having to get one with his own built-in control panel? Uh, yes, yes, yes. It should be part of this. Like, we, we also uh, uh, read the uh, server admin tools and game admin tools, and, and so this is a big part of, of this update. And is there is this kind of the once this is done and released and you're kind of happy with it? Is this the plan? Sort of that's it for MP, and now we're going to move our focus onto something else, or are there oh. going to be sort of some iterative, <laughs> up, iterative updates coming afterwards? It's from chat. I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's yes. them asking, not me. I, I think we'll we'll iterate on this multiplier for some time, uh, but not feature wise. More like um, you know the reliability and maybe performance, because mm -hmm. like for sure this space engineer so people will start pushing the game to the limits and uh, we'll discover some new edge cases that we never uh, tested here or, you know, like it never happened. And so I've, I'm quite sure that we'll iterate uh, on this update a little bit, but uh, feature-wise, I don't think we'll add that much, more like just what is there making better. And then we'll move, like regarding the features, we'll move on uh, on something else. Okay, cool. By the way, Joel, one question. Uh, yeah, man. Can you check if the stream is actually going to YouTube? Right it now? is. It's because the chat, the chat would have said something definitely if, if they, if they. Oh yeah. Have. Yeah, I'm reading it from they, YouTube. Yeah. They would have let us know. Where are you guys? Um, uh, I don't know. Okay. It's uh, it's Lamar's one, yeah. I'm down, yeah. down the, t down the, uh, the hole here, which is 800 meters deep right now. Uh, the question is, oh, it's just I... out there. Oh, no, I... I am so sorry. Uh, I thought we could really drill for a second, killing the server, but it actually wasn't. Someone pasted in grindy gears, uh, um, the massive... That's... Don't do it. Oh. It's right, Digger. man. Jump there appears there. to be a land ship on the horizon. Not... not... yeah. Does this thing have stopping thrusters? Not enough it, to do that. Oh, who's shooting cannons at us? <laughs> oh, wait, who's coming down here? <laughs> No, he's, uh, that, that ship is not meant to do that. I didn't design it to go straight down. <laughs> You're not coming back. I did uh, have an instruction manual. Oh, uh, well, you know. Time to abandon ship. Um, you may want to delete that. This is what happens. This is what happens when you try to fly somebody else's build. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to pull a jack. Oh, you're, uh, you're coming down here now. That wasn't my plan. No, no, no. If I just delete these blocks. Oh, I got it. Don't worry. The whole top bit falls in. Oh, the, and, pirate, yeah. the pirate ship just shot over Oh, no, actually, oh, I shoot. think we may be being boarded. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> We're being broadsided by the <laughs> land yacht over here. Yeah, the pirate ship just sent loads of rockets in. I think it's time to board him. I'm coming out. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm changing faction. I'm defecting. This looks like a far cooler place to be. <laughs> yeah, they've got, they got sails. Oh, they oh. had sails. Had. <sighs> this is why we can't oh. have nice things. <laughs> I like his steering wheel. Yeah, this is pretty great. Minus the mass is gone, but you know. Uh, but we didn't need that. Extra. Still sailing well. Features. Smooth it's sailing. Awesome sauce. It's like Sea of Thieves, but Space Engineers are Thieves. Space <laughs> Thieves. <laughs> oh, well. It's amazing what you could do. Like, I'm so pumped to get 16 players, because now we can oh, have, like, proper, well, I guess, land yacht battles here. We can have pirate fights. I was thinking like, you know, multi-crew like battles, stuff like that, where you've got a team of engineers doing damage control. Battles like last a lot longer, especially when you've got people running around, you're welding up reactors and blast doors. You can, be yeah, cool. you can really do it. You can, uh, it's especially like, of course, the problem is if you have like, uh, the main problem is griefers, but if you have like some players who you, you, know, you, you know of and stuff and you've got a bunch and you can actually organize like a battle, I think you can have some really legit experiences now. It's uh it really has Yeah, you been. get your approved list going. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, the feature, and I haven't run a, uh, a dedicated server in a long time, is there already built like a, a feature to have um, certain people have like priority over others to get into a server? Already yeah, for yeah, it's already public there. relations. Yeah, it's there, yes, it's yeah. there. Okay. 
like was that uh, new though I can't think I think this is new yeah because we, we also needed it for the public tests that uh, for example I couldn't get to the server you know because it was full so we we put there this like priority or it's reserved slots, slots basically yeah. so in the server admin control panel you have a, a tab for reserved slots and you basically just add someone steam ID so even if the server's full you'll still get in so it's super useful uh, you know, especially if you're an admin or something else trying to get into your own server or what, you know, it's, it's, it's a useful feature. There's a lot of good things coming uh, with the actual uh, admin tool. There's a whole below deck section on this build. I love it. I'd get out of FOU. Oh, oh. What, why? Why? This is, well, <laughs> yeah. uh, I wanted to know if it could sound a cannibal. Baseball. I mean, <laughs> the lesson learned there is makes a beautiful shipwreck. Let's see here. So, minus, here's, here's a question then, guys. So, uh, this is kind of something that you guys in chat and Discord can answer, and so can the chat. Um, minus that ISP issues we're having earlier with the stream cutting out. What would what would you say like uh, out of out of ten? What would you rate how the how the multiplayer look? I mean, you might not go to play it yourself, right? I'm not sure. This server's been pretty full, but out of ten, what would you what what did the multiplayer look like? It was behaving right. I'm kind of curious. This is for the streamers, right? So it's for you as well, though. Yeah, you can say as well. Um, I'd say from like just first impressions, like after been playing like most of the tests for the last month, and I guess we've been running them. Um, I just give it a nine. Is what I'd really give it. Just because of like amount of stuff we can now do. Like so many new players, so many new possibilities. Do you create amazing fun? Have proper battles? Have months where we can do faction wars? Yeah, it's it's a lot more enjoyable for us now. Yeah, that was a good question, Joe. Actually, quite useful. Thanks, guys, for putting your numbers in the yeah. chat. It's really so great. People to see. mostly say like <laughs> eight, nine, sometimes seven, of course, but usually eight or nine. Which is good. I'm, I mean, uh, I think. But no one, is, well, no one is. Or sometimes he's giving like ten, of course, not many. Oh. Sometimes someone is saying like nine, eleven, <laughs> and there is ten and nines. Yeah, it's very good. I think. I think the guys who work on this, you know, Chendo, Petra, Philip, and other guys, they will be quite. Satisfied with mm -hmm. himself. What in the hell is going Ooh, on? Look at this thing, yeah. Oh, Check truck. out the shocks on it. Look at how many I, rotors it's got to make it work. Yeah, this has I got custom suspension, <laughs> basically. This was one of the, yeah. this actually won uh, engineering contest. This this kind of, this is a massive, uh, wow, this is, oh, oh yeah, this is the, uh, okay, because if someone pasted in the, yeah. the digger earlier and that kind of killed the sim speed, there was, that digger's got like, Probably a thousand grids on one vehicle, right? This is insane. I, I don't even know how you can make this. <laughs> you know what I mean? How can it work? Crazy. This suspension's blowing me away, though. That's awesome. How well does it run? Does she just explode or does she drive? I mean, she's holding together now. It's impressive. Can you turn those rotors on? Oh, it's lowering right now. Oh, look at that. Hang on, I got a... Um... Oh, he's, dri uh, he's driving and lowering it, because that's the idea. You drive, it's actually to pick up another vehicle. Shaq, I should probably no, link hang you hang up on, this... I'll drive up on the back of it. I should probably link you up this uh, this workshop world that has a tons of creations by Grindy Gears all in there. And there's like a big rover thing that actually goes onto the back of this, which is then lifted onto the back of the other vehicle. It's pretty mad. Oh, this is not the vehicle that this was meant for. <laughs> it's yeah, a lot smaller, but it'll do. It, it doesn't really fit at the, on the ramps, so I'm going to use a little bit of my my hydrogen thrust to I get her over that bump. Thrusters. Little cheaty thrusters. Those are those are my boosters. I need a make right, for Mass Effect. Oh, yeah. There you go. All right, I'm on. My nomad Break. won't spawn in. It needs mods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sad times. Yeah, going through my list, I'm like, hmm, what doesn't have mods? Not much. <laughs> hey, so, I want to come on. So I guess it oh, it's lifted it too. So I get a question to actually kind of actually reverse that is, so for all you guys, both chats, you know, YouTube and Twitch, what would you give the current multiplayer? So the multiplayer you've had for like, it's hard to say for like the last year, because obviously there's been some changes there here and there, but for the, uh, the 
how would you rate out of 10 the experience in multiplayer right now? Just so I can gauge between what you just gave for like this, watching this, and what you, what you currently have. I'm sitting at a, I got two compared to this. If you're comparing this directly to what we're playing right now, the old version, I'd have to give it a two or a four, because this is like another game. Yep, this is very much like the game we always wanted. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't like the number thing, partly because I haven't had a chance to actually test yeah, it myself. Yeah, I know. If it's you know kind of I mean. a silly thing, Wasted. I know it's and true. it's a bit arbitrary. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, I going to say something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I really I think was. one of the biggest worries that I have is when we when we and you, uh, Wasted, were trying to get the, the local server hosting to work, we had some serious issues. And I'm mm-hmm. hoping that by the time the release comes, we'll be able to host our own, you know, four or five people and, and, and be able to get in. We just had joining problems. Um, but outside of that, and you had everything's been pretty amazing. When uh, you were hosting locally, like from your desktop, like so, yeah. so your client <laughs> yeah, and server local host. at the same moment, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we had some issues where we couldn't get more than uh, what, th- three people. We couldn't yeah, get I the fourth person. It, 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 fourth person caused it problems. Yeah, but I mean, that's what I was mentioning about local hosting earlier. Is it'd, be, it'd be nice to see that get this level of, of update as well. I know it might not be possible, but it, that convenience of just being able to, especially even as a new player, just being able to get in, they probably pick up the game with a friend and they just want to be able to jump together and play and, and dedicated servers and all that. Like, it's a bit of a barrier, uh, especially as you know, f- just thinking from my own perspective, I'd be wary about joining some big server with loads of people on it for my first time. Because mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, but there'll be loads of people there. Will they steal my things? Like, I, I, I'll look like a noob. I just want to jump in with, with the friend I just bought it with. Now, yeah, uh, one of our sense. devs said, oh yeah, sorry. One of our devs said that this is fixed in that current dev version, this joining issue, by the way, uh, wasted. That cool. was uh, fixed. Um, yeah, but it'll, it'll go out with the next test uh, or the release, whatever comes first. And for the the dedicated, or not for the dedicated, for the local, will we see this kind of stability if your rig can handle it hosting? Is this being transferred over to that too? Probably it should, but uh, I I still need to like review this this one thing, you know, this local hosting. So I don't want to promise anything. Uh, the thing is that uh, it's more performance costly when you are client and server at the same moment. And so that's, you know, like why it's not as easy. And, uh, but as I said, like, I need to review this and, and then I will address this in the blog post. This is crazy that this thing is driving just fine with both these cars in the back. And I've got uh, pistons on here as well. <laughs> yeah, my one's, not, my one's got a rotor like turret on the back of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is that my abomination in the background? background. This, is, this is the lander abomination. This is what it turned into when we got 16 people to join a server and just connected all of the landing uh, atmospheric landers together into this. And we had swarms picking up what? merge yeah. blocks and connecting the batteries on for us. If you painted it pink, um, then it would get destroyed. It was very good. And this is what we made. And then we flew it around with, with 16 people oh. on it. Oh, you put it in. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I, I, I remember to take a blueprint. Fair. That is the worst thing ever made in Space Engineers. But also one of the coolest things I've ever made in Space Engineers. But made in an hour by 16 people, yeah. That, that was Armco community there slapping that sucker together. What's actually really amazing is now we've got access to <laughs> no. on a server. It's how fast they can do stuff. Wow. But it flies. Uh, terribly, but it flies. Oh, it goes we had, really, we had, really oh, well. Nice. We had like crews running to put that thing together. People were stripping ones down as they arrived. People were like requesting landing to find a place to, to drop down their vehicle. It was it was something that we had never experienced in SE before that like we not only can we do this we can work together and do this and we've actually got to get organized there's enough people here that we've got to get like roles going it's cool it's really cool yeah i think three guys just took it upon themselves to deal with the battery problem and made a little ship out of of scrapped out parts and then that ship spent the whole time just relaying batteries onto the vessel and connecting them on so we didn't lose them got to talk to those guys two of those batteries fell off two of the batteries (laughs) did fall off yes (laughs) (laughs) This is beautiful. It's it's a beautiful abomination, is what I call it. Well. It's, yes. it's gorgeous. It's very it's nice. our abomination. Okay, guys, <laughs> so I will, I will come. I will, I will go. And uh, Joel, you probably want to stay, right? Yeah, I, I can stay for a bit. Yeah, I can stay okay. for a bit. Yeah. Good, good. So it was very nice to speak to you all, and uh, I'm like glad that we have this play together. I'm also happy that I could answer your questions and I hope you are happy with my answers. And uh, 
See you next time, hopefully with the MP release or maybe some other, you know, like event or something. So yeah. thank you and bye bye. Thank, thank you, you, Marek. I think I think this was a really good session to have. It was nice being able to hear it from the man himself and get mm -hmm. a load Definitely. of the community's questions answered. It's a you know, nice open way of doing this bit of development. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah thank you very much, Marek. Very good. Awesome. It's been really thank good. You. Bye bye, guys. Bye. Cool. I'm going to decide what to do now, Marek. Mm -hmm. How about you guys? In the ch How about you guys? You, you three, you you still okay to hang about a bit? And I know Wasted has some stuff to do, but how, how yeah, you yeah, I got I got to run myself. But this was really good times. <laughs> See Likewise, you, yeah, I think it's for me today. So okay, guys. that was a lot of fun. Thank you, chat, for letting us field our field your questions. Indeed, it was, was enjoyable. I think we got some some cool ideas about where Spec Engineers is headed. Definitely. So you guys, massive thanks to Captain Jack, Captain Shack, and Waste of Space for joining us on this uh, wonderful adventure. I say it was it was really really great. We've had some great, uh, did some really cool tests here. Oh, it's just a shame about we had those ISP issues earlier. But apart from that, it's actually gone uh, better than what well, say better better than I had hoped. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So this is uh, really really awesome. Um, and check out those guys YouTube. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with these guys. And uh, if you guys, zero mods there, if you want to plug your own channels, uh, go ahead. <laughs> ah, cheers. Go ahead, Gay. They do awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome content. I've been yeah, watching these. I've known these guys for many years now, so it's uh, yeah, been really, really great. And they answer great, they ask great questions as well, so. No, no, appreciate it, appreciate fellas. it, fellas. Catch I'll you catch you all later. See you, wasted. Stream and whatever, whatever, whatever Zot gets up to. So cheers for watching, guys. Remember to hit that like Doc, button for you. If you enjoyed that. All right, guys. I'll be back so over on the XP Gamers YouTube channel. My name is Captain Shack. So cheers Shack. for watching, guys. Remember to hit that like button for me if you enjoyed that. Check out some cool that. content. Or uh, see like you guys later. Questions I was asking. I think I got see some pretty good ones in there. Obviously, dislike. That was nice. That was a nice.